Come on, tell them. You deserve. Over the world, lift your voice and say, My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Wherever you are, lift your voice. Say, My hallelujah. My hallelujah hey. belongs to you. We give you glory, Father. Say, My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Now let's lift our voice together and say, You deserve. Healed your body. Lift your hand and say, All the glory. If you're thankful you made it out of 2020, say, All the glory. Now lift your voice and tell them tonight. Worship you. Say my hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, come on, cry. Say oh.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For God has shown thee what is good. And what does the Lord require of thee but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God? Good morning. We welcome you this morning to the Andrew Rankin Memorial Chapel. And we pray God's blessings upon you as we seek to worship our God in spirit and in truth. We are blessed this morning to have as our speaker, the Reverend Dr. Susan Johnson Cook. Dr. Johnson Cook, in addition to her former services as the United States Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom, has served as a presidential advisor, pastor, theologian, author, activist, and academic. Currently, Ambassador Cook is the president and CEO of Charisma Speakers. We welcome her back to Rankin Chapel and pray for her as she brings a word from the Lord. This week's scripture comes from Psalm 24, verses 1 through 6, and it reads, The earth is the Lord and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For God has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive the blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek God, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Let us be still before our God. Most gracious and loving God, we come confessing that at times it's hard to trust ourselves. We know what we want to do, but too often when the moment comes, we fail to do it. Through it all, we, we know that when we cannot trust ourselves, we can still trust you. We can trust you when the pressures of life seek to overwhelm us and we act out of our hurt and anger. We can trust you when our insecurities seduce us to do what is safe and easy. When we retreat into blaming others, wallow in self-pity, and convince ourselves that we do not care. For you, O oh God, you will not leave us to ourselves. You look beyond our sins and weaknesses to see our needs. You see the good in us. You trust us to change and to grow. You refuse to give up on us. In this moment, oh God, we open up our hearts to grasp the depth of your love for us. We lean not on our own understanding so that we'll be able to see beyond these present struggles, to see the future, to see the hope that you have for us. Believing, believing, oh God, that our tomorrows will be better than our yesterdays. Believing in the inner recesses of our souls that it's never too late. With you, all things are possible. We and our loved ones can be healed and be made whole. And somehow, all things will work together for our good. And so we trust you, Lord. We trust that you will guide us through these difficult and troubling times, through this pandemic. We trust you that you will make right what is so wrong with our nation. Justice will roll down as waters and, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. You will be our bridge over troubled waters. And all will be well with our souls. Even when we cannot trust ourselves, we can still trust you. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, God, my. 
and good morning. How awesome it is to be with you today. To President Frederick, Dean Richardson, Reverend Clergy, both my pastors here in the DMV, FBC Church of Glen Arden, Pastor John K. Jenkins, and my home church in New York, Union Baptist Church in the village of Harlem, Pastor Brian Scott, to members of the board, friends of the chapel, chapel assistants, administration, faculty, and students, and to our co-Howard Bison, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, how excited, ignited, and delighted we are to be at this moment on this campus, celebrating not just a moment in history, but a Sister Bison beloved. And to my sorors, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, also birthed and founded on this campus, and to all the Divine Nine and everyone who worked, embraced, collaborated, loved up on, got out the vote, wrote checks, prayed, we share this moment. And finally, to the Our Daily Bread Voices Collection, members of the Global Black Women's Chamber of Commerce, 100 dynamic black women business owners, to the WOW Women, Women on the World Stage, and the 50 Real Black Women in Ministry Thrive Fellows, who are the game changers breaking the stained glass ceiling in this used to be all boys club patriarchy. I greet all of you with Jesus joy. You know, there is no experience like preaching for the Howard University Chapel. Dean Richardson, for years you have kept all of us going, flowing, glowing, and growing. And it is an honor to co-sojourn with you. I count you not just as the dean, but also my friend. So what a mighty God we serve. Heaven and earth adore him, angels bow before him. Come magnify the Lord with me. Won't you join me with a word of prayer? God, we give you thanks, we worship you, we adore you, we bow before you, we honor you, we bless your name. It is in the name of Jesus that we say, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So we shout it out today, Jesus, your power. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your omniscience and your omnipresence. Now be with us and anoint us afresh as we preach this word. May you get all the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let all who believe say, amen. And you can also shout hallelujah every now and then. I want you to focus your attention with me today on a familiar passage of scripture, Isaiah 43, the first two verses, verses one through three, and then verses 10 through 19. It says, I have redeemed you. I have given Egypt as a great ransom for you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed. I, and not some foreign God among you, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? God's mercy and Israel's unfaithfulness. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitive all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One. Israel's creator, your King. This is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. And this is the part I want us to focus on. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it shall spring up. Do you not conceive it or perceive it? Can't you feel it, one version says? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the deserts. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our theme this morning is, can't you feel a brand new day? Can't you feel a brand new day? When Stephanie Mills sang this in the Broadway rendition and production, The Wiz, little did we know that this would be our theme song in 2021. 
She was declaring freedom, a breath of fresh air, an exhale, if you wish, after the wicked witch was dead. And all the little trolls and the lollipop kids rejoiced with her before they had been silent, snuffed out, because they were afraid to rise up and speak out. But now, the one who had had a narcissistic evil hold on them was gone melted down, away back to the evil from which she'd come. Now that was a fairy tale, not only for four years, but that was a fairy tale many years ago. But for us, the last four years has not only been a fairy tale, it's been a nightmare. Not one that's come from a tornado in Kansas that took Darcy to a make-believe land. No, we've lived a nightmare, from George Floyd to Ahmaud Arbery to, yes, I said her name, Breonna Taylor to Jordan McBath and so many others. And we felt like those who were held in captivity and we raised the question that comes from the Bible, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Oh, but now some of us are singing and some of us even like Martha and the Vandellas have been dancing in the streets. Oh, can't you feel a brand new day? Now God in his prophetic word declares through his prophet Isaiah to us, those of us alone who have been through similar pain and similar trauma and travail, God says, the tests and the mess and the unnecessary stress is over. I'm going to give you new coping skills. I'm going to give you a brand new day. A new day has come. We, we've been facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Now the day has begun. Now you've got to march on that we should have selective memory and not dwell on the past. He says, forget the former things. God says, I am in control. I was in control. I shall be in control. Whichever tense you want to use grammatically, the answer will still arrive at the same place that God is in control. And you and I were created to give him praise and to know that God is in control. And we are to be witnesses of how and when and where he is at work. It's one thing to say God is omnipresent and omniscient, but it's another to really believe that, lo, I am with you always, even till the end. This sentiment is repeated even in Matthew's gospel, the 25th chapter. So when Jesus is about to leave us so that the comforter can come, he says, look, go ye into all the world and do the impossible, the incredible, Look for miracles because I've evidence for you, not only in the lives of others, but in your life. He says, lo, I am with you always. And so Isaiah, the prophet, is seeing this day, today at the end of January, my birthday, and says, oh, in this 43rd chapter, God put up ransom for us. He wanted us so badly, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our lives, our praise, that he took countries that he had created and exchanged them so that you and I could be his. Now, you know, I was a New York City Police Department chaplain for 21 years. So I watched a lot of NYPD blue, a lot of blue bloods, a lot of Chicago PD. Come on, some of y'all watch it too. But ransoms are only used when precious cargo is at stake. It's used to save a life. They'll put up ransom. And what God is saying is, I put up ransom for you. You are precious cargo. I want to save your lives. And so then God really has to backtrack. He says, let's, let's go back to Isaiah 6. Isaiah 6 is working. Isaiah at that point is working in the White House of his time. He's working with King Uzziah and has a pretty important, a pretty influential role. Some say he was like a Stacey Abrams. He was a governor. And others say he was like a vice president, like Kamala Harris. But it was clear that he was an on insider. He was on the inside track. When I worked for the White House, um, I used to be on the inside track. I had a blue pass, which meant you could go in and out the White House. But it was when King Isaiah died, when King Isaiah was out of the way, that he had his purpose. He found his calling, his assignment that was larger than his position. He was to fulfill an assignment for God. Some see only the negative in COVID, but I just want to give you a note that um, in the positive of COVID, some of us just stopped. And so I want to just give you a note right here. Just, we cheered President Obama and we cheer now President Biden and Vice President Harris. We cheer them on, but they're on assignment. Yes, they got the most votes in both the popular and the electoral college, and they've accepted the leadership of this very challenging crisis-filled country and world where they could go crazy if they really thought about how much was on their plate. But Isaiah says to them, as he says to us, and he gets to 9-6, he said, look, 
Thou wilt keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on thee because you trust in thee. And so the, the prophecies, he prophesies later, whose shoulders the government shall be upon. He says, you know, the government shall be upon the shoulders of the one who was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. That's who's holding all of this together. We, we can be elected to office, but the government is upon his shoulders. And, and really, that's what Biden was talking about when he said, we're fighting for the soul of America. We're fighting so souls not only go to the polls, but also come back to the Lord who made the heavens and the earth that we might live in decency. He, he's saying you and me. So when we get to Isaiah 40, right before we get to Isaiah 43, we're a people who are calling out for comfort. And God says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Some were inconsolable like we were the past four years. So when we now arrive at Isaiah 43, God says, I've taken you back to see how the journey begins. He says, our text for today, he said, folks have really been through some stuff. This is not fluff. He says, this ain't playing and neither is God. God says, we need an answer. We've been through the waters. We've been through locusts and pandemics. God, what should we do now? God is really giving us his formula on how he handles things. He says, one, he gives us spiritual forgetfulness. He says, don't remember the things of the past which bring you stress. In other words, go to Philippians, jump over and say, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. That's what Paul says to the church at Philippi, and that's really what Isaiah is saying to us. Think on these things. Why, God says? Because God says, I have a way of changing the very nature of the nature I created. Creatures which used to bring you harm will be humbled and learn how to praise me. Deserts, which used to be dry and barren places, will receive nourishment and moisture. He says, I, I can do a new thing, not only in deserts, but I can also do a new thing in you, for you, with you. Things that used to disturb you won't disturb you anymore. Folks you used to be afraid of, not anymore. He says, I'm emboldening you and taking you from embarrassment to enlightenment, to emboldenment. Can't you feel a brand new day? He's reminding you that you have him. And, and when he and you are together, and when you and our God are together, no one can separate us. But you've got to praise me, he says. Remember, that's what I formed you to do. Not a pity pat praise, not a cutie pie praise, not just a sunshiny day praise, but praise me through all things. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He says, and this is the next thing. Not only forget the things of the past, not only praise me, but he says, you are witnesses. Every time you take the stand, you're taking it from me. Now, I didn't go to Howard's Law School. I just went to the School of Business, and I thank God for the School of Business executive program. But I imagine if Vernon Jordan or Thurgood Marshall would cross-examine me, I'd have to say to them, as I say to everyone else, yes, I give God the praise. I am a witness. I've taken the oath. I have put my hand on the Bible. I stand on the word of God. I've got evidence that God will do just what God says. I'm tried. I'm true. I'm tested that God comes through. He's taken my family from the fields and from the fields of North Carolina and Virginia, from an outhouse, and let me walk in the front door of the White House. I'm a living witness. Not only does God come through, but God will carry us through. Didn't, didn't the songwriter say, ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you? He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. So the only time you need to plead the fifth is when you're quoting the fifth psalm. Hear my cry, O king. Only time you need to plead the fifth is the fifth verse of Psalm 1, that you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and not be moved. So I know some things have upset you. I know that some of you are upset because you couldn't dress up for the inaugural balls. I, I know that. And I know that you couldn't dress up for your Zooms. In fact, most of us have had leggings on the bottom. Come on, somebody. And on our Zoom calls, we've had a nice blazer or sweater on top. I know, sisters, you paid all that money for your St. John's and couldn't wear them. But God says, after you finish reading Isaiah 43, 
grab hold to the gospel of St. John's. That, that's the St. John's I want you to wear. I want you to wear the word and, and then jump over to Ephesians and dress up with the whole armor of God. Why? So that you can withstand all that's coming at you and towards you as I do this new thing in your life. Can't you feel a brand new day? See, some are not going to like the new you. Oh, no, no. You feel a brand new day. But there's 74 million who did not vote like you, who did not go your way. So some stormed the U.S. Capitol to show you that it's not a brand new day for you. Others have a hit out for AOC and Kareem Jeffries. And some have the nerve to put their feet up on the speaker's desk. Not everybody's happy because it's your brand new day. Well, I had the honor of serving two White Houses with President Bill Clinton and with President Barack Obama as faith advisors. Both were exhilarating and they were also exhausting. Because as you rise, as Maya Angelou says, and still we rise, it reminds us that still as we're rising, there's still systemic racism, sexism, fascism, and it intensifies. I was a U.S. ambassador, and, and I felt the sting of it. We had a black president in office, and systemic racism is real. Some did not like it that I was up there as a U.S. ambassador at large for international religious freedom. But God says... Not only can I make rivers in the desert, I can make U.S. ambassadors, and now I can show you I can make vice presidents who are a woman, who's a woman and African and Asian American descent. God says, I can do all things. I can take a black girl from a walk-up tenement and make her ambassador. I can take a little thin girl from a single mom's household, take her to Harvard, have her become the first youth Nobel poet laureate, and have her stand and recite her poetic recitation at the inauguration of Biden and Harris. Oh, yes. We ain't seen nothing yet. In Spanish, they say, no ha vista nada toda vista. No, you ain't seen nothing yet. Can't you feel this brand new day? So as we feel this brand new day, knowing that 74 million folks did not vote like you, knowing that God is still in control. Can't you understand that we now have to dress up with the whole armor of God? Don't you know that we've got to put on everything, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation? Because there'll be those who will try to seek to attack. We just saw a glimpse of it a couple of weeks ago, but there'll be those who will seek to attack and distract and attempt to assassinate lives and characters. So yes, it can be a brand new day. Yes, you can get some Patti LaBelle up in here. And, and even when they're attacking you, you can say, I've got a new attitude. I'm feeling good from my head to my shoes. I've got a new attitude, ooh, ooh, because I am experiencing my brand new day. I'm smiling, and I'm thrilled, and I've got this great urgency and great responsibility. I've got an assignment to pray for God to lead us, to pray for those who lead us, to guide us, protect us, direct us. Now, I opened up with Stephanie Mill's song that eased us on down the road to Isaiah 43. And I then took us to Patti LaBelle. But as I close, I'm going to close with one of the old hymns of the church. I know many don't sing those anymore. I know praise teams got their own thing, but this is one of the old hymns of the church that has blessed me. It says, lead me, guide me along the way. Lord, if you lead me, I shall not stray. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Lead me, O oh Lord, lead me. Can't you? Feel a brand new day. Can't you feel a brand new day? Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, for the anointing and the appointing. In Jesus' name we pray that all who believe shout hallelujah and say amen.
so many wonderful blessings and a so
thank you for that beautiful message. Though the physical doors of the chapel are closed, the chapel still remains open and vibrant as we continue to support the entire Howard University community. And we need your financial contributions. In order to support the ministry of the chapel, please visit our website, chapel.howard.edu. There you will find a give link. And during this time of uncertainty, never forget the power of prayer. You may submit prayer requests via the chapel website as well. We are so incredibly excited to invite our student organizations to begin to submit calls to chapel. Calls to chapel may be submitted via the chapel website. Join the office of the Dean of the Chapel for the Wellness Collective, an experience for the mind, body, and spirit. Featuring experts in mindfulness, meditation, psychology, self-care, and spiritual care. Beginning February 15th, this virtual interactive series will take place bi-weekly. To stay current on all things Chapel, follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook with the handle at Howard U Chapel. Take a moment now and subscribe to our YouTube page and like us on Facebook. Lastly, wherever you're worshiping with us, share your experience with the hashtag Sundays are for Chapel. We now welcome Dean Richardson, who will lead us in our benediction. Thank you, Ambassador, for that very powerful message. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction. We thank you, O God, for what eyes have seen. But put your hand in the hand of God, and God shall be for you better than light and much safer than a known way. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.